Welcome everyone to this podcast. I'm really pleased to be here with Anthony. Do you want to say hello to our listeners? Yeah, good morning, everybody. My name's Anthony. I'm a believer and I'm also a follower of Christ and I'm also a sinner saved by grace through faith. Beautiful, beautiful. Welcome everyone to today's podcast. So this is the first of a series on the book of Proverbs, uh, which is an ancient book in the Old Testament uh, full of wisdom and knowledge. Um, so we're going to be starting at the, at the beginning in chapter one, Proverbs being written by the great King Solomon, Melech Sholomon, who was the son of King David. Um, now, Solomon is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ in ascension and exaltation, out of death ascended and exalted. Uh, King David being a type of the Lord Jesus Christ pre-crucifixion. And uh, Solomon was given great, great wisdom. And, well, Anthony jolly well needed it. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. What do you think? What have you got to say, beloved? Yeah, I heartily agree. You know, God equips the unequipped. And uh, Solomon, yeah, as you said, he certainly needed wisdom as he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. And, uh, you know, when, when, when you look at this, uh, the book of Proverbs, looking at the proverb we're looking at now, the first part. I mean, Proverbs is the best under, it's best understood in context with the books of Ecclesiastes and Job. In Proverbs, wisdom is given in short, you know, simple general terms. Ecclesiastes represents wisdom based on observation and experience. This often shows how the general principle of the book of Proverbs, as it says there, to know wisdom on Proverbs 1, 2, and to perceive the words of understanding. So, you know, to know wisdom and to perceive the words of understanding, I can only do that through the Holy Spirit. When my fallen nature gets revealed to me and I start reading the Bible, then I start and I pray before I pick the Bible up. And then, you know, I, I start because that's what I was kind of kind of explained and taught to do. Then then through the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of God starts getting its ministers to me because it says in seven, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. You know, so before Christ, I was very rebellious. You know, I was quite anti-authoritative and, you know, I just lived a wayward life, really. You know, and then I come into recovery. I get born again. The father draws me to the son. He's got to be granted by the father to come to the son. The only way to the father is through the son. And then the Bible, the word starts getting revealed to me, you know, and I start realizing why it's because it says it, it says uh, about asking for wisdom. Uh, it says, where is it? It says, uh, hey, my son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother, for they will be graceful ornaments on your head and chains about your neck. So what he's saying there is what God's saying is, you know, hear the instruction of your father and hear the instruction of your mother, right? So it's basically, you know, the way I look at this is that what God's really saying, he is a father and he is a mother. You know, our, our biological parents, you know, as family, you know, we, we, we listen to instruction because my, my dad, you know, our parents split up, but my dad used to say some things that he was an alcoholic, but he, he did say some things when he was sober that was wise, you know, and, uh, and you know, and I, I kind of and I took heed, and it says it in 10, my son, if sinners entice you, do not consent, because bad company corrupts good character. So the hyperbole, scripture back in scripture, all this is backed up further on, you know, and, and uh, it says, uh, where is it? I'll just touch on this and pass it over to you for a minute. Cast in your lot among us and let us all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your foot from their path. So in, in the program, you know, and, and, and it talks about being fully self-supporting. Because I know today that God is my source. You know, uh, I'm not looking for man's validation. I'm looking for God's validation. I'll go around it back over to you for a minute, Paul. Well, that's very good of you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I forgot to say, Anthony, that we are going to be reading the entire chapter in a few moments. Um, this is just by way of introduction to the series of podcasts that we're going to be doing on the whole book of Proverbs. So if you've just logged on to this on YouTube, I want to tell you the Lord Jesus Christ is a glorious eternal king, uh, is well able to save completely and entirely all those that come to him. 
uh, you know, and that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin uh, and that men can be made entirely whole through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, 1 Corinthians 1.30 declares that the Lord Jesus Christ himself is wisdom. And in this book, we're going to see the personification of wisdom uh, over and over again, both in the masculine and the feminine in the Hebrew language in which this book was written. Now, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. We see that God's precious son, the son of the father's love, is actually wisdom for all mankind. We know that all mankind received life through this glorious person, Anthony. Anyone that's ever walked this planet received life through the glorious Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone that is living, the 8,000 million near humans at this present moment, Anthony, is alive by the grace and mercy and atoning death and triumphal resurrection and glorious ascension and wondrous exaltation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, Colossians, my brother. Chap Colossians chapter 2, verse 3, says that in this person are hidden all the glorious treasures, the glorious tereasures of wisdom and knowledge. So I just want to make that clear at the outset. Uh, I want to say please like and subscribe subscribe uh, if you've any comments uh, obviously it's impossible to say everything in, in a in a podcast but we're we're going to do the best we can if you'd like to add anything to what you're hearing uh, please do in the comments below uh, if you'd like to make any points please do so um, so without further ado Anthony I would like us to read there are 33 verses so would you like to read the first half or the second half? I'll read the first half. And uh, I'm just going to keep this in context. We've just kind of touched on it. Before I quickly read this, Paul, I'm just going to... Proverbs chapter 1 is clearly born out of Solomon's life history. Solomon held himself back from no earthly pleasure. He had everything he could ever desire. And in the end, he saw the foolishness of his actions. Chapter 1 is Solomon's reflection on his own life. How... He had all the wisdom of God available to him, and yet it shows the follow after foolish desires. Other chapters detail the advice which this experience allows Solomon to give. Okay, I'll, I'll start. Okay, can, we, can we come to the scriptures, please? I'm just like about to, to do that, my start. friend. Okay, the beginning of knowledge. One, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and an instruction is to perceive the words of understanding to receive the instruction of wisdom justice judgment and equity to give prudence to the simple to the young man knowledge and discretion a wise man will hear and increase learning and a man of understanding will listen attain wise uh, uh, understanding will attain wise counsel to understand a proverb is an enigma. The words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but the fools despise, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instructions of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother, for they will be a graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie in well, wait to shed blood. Let us lurk secretly for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like Sheol and whole like those who go down to the pit. We shall find all kinds of precious possessions. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in your lot among us and let us all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way of them. Keep your foot from their path, for their feet run to evil and they make haste to shed blood. Pass it over to you, Paul. 
Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, but they lie in wait for their own blood. They lurk secretly for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone who is greedy for gain. It takes away the life of its owners. Wisdom calls aloud outside. She raises her voice in the open squares. She cries out in the chief concourses. At the openings of the gates in the city, she speaks her words. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? The scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit upon you. I will make my words known to you, because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no one regarded. Because you disdained all my counsel and would have none of my rebuke, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your terror comes. When your terror comes like a storm and your destruction comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me. Because they hated knowledge, they did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would have none of my counsel and despised my every rebuke. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled to the full with their own fancies. For the turning away of the simple will slay them and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. So what I want us to do, beloved, is to is to very briefly um, to 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 share our thoughts. Um, you know, I see it's in is it in four portions and on oh, three portions. You see, so so we can perhaps spend a minute or two each giving our thoughts on each portion before we move on to the next chapter. Um, so what what have you got to say about the first seven verses? You're muted, Anthony. Right, yep. Okay, what was that question you just asked me? The first seven oh. verses. Right, yes, oh. I was, yes. I, was I, think it, I think it actually starts where it actually starts and opens up. It says, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. So to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive... So it's about asking for the wisdom. So I can't give, in the natural, I can't give myself that wisdom. All wisdom, knowledge and understanding, I wholeheartedly believe, comes from God. It tells us that in scripture, you know, and, and, and the further we move on in the Proverbs, it, you know, it talks about the wisdom. And who's the wisdom? Christ. Who's, who, 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 who's the vitality of all life? Christ. You know, and uh, so it says to give prudence to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. So to give prudence to the simple and, and, and to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning. So a wise man will hear. It says be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to anger in the book of James. And I'm just, you know, and then it says, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. Meaning, it says further on in these proverbs, a wise man has many counsellors. So it's about accountability, having people who, in the Christian circle, who I look up to because they lead by example and by encouragement, and I see by their actions that they are living a Christ-like life. You know, and and I and I and I and I, and, and I wish to aspire to that. And also, if I can't see the wood from the trees. 
or I've come under attack in some form or another from the enemy, you know, and uh, I might have made a mistake, then I need to seek wisdom. I need to seek a solution to a problem. So, you know, I can go to God with that, you know, and I can pray for the wisdom and, he, you know, he, he, he'll give me, the, you know, the wisdom, the knowledge, the revelation, you know, uh, the discernment. Because, you know, it's about asking for spiritual discernment as well and also asking for strategy, you know, wisdom and instruction. Yeah. So to, yeah. Uh, one minute, to understand a proverb and an enigma, the words of the wise and their riddles, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So as soon as I start fearing the God and realising that he's sovereign over all, he created all, even the devil. You know, he created everything. You know, so I've got to know that because it says, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So if I let pride or ego or anything like that get in the way and trying to run on self-will or letting the flesh wear its head, it's not a good place to be. So I have to get humble and go to the creator, go to my father, go to the, go to the father and seek wisdom. Go on. Well, I'm not convinced at all. I think we've got to be very cautious to stay in, in what scripture says, Anthony. Uh, and I'm not going to go down a side path. I'm about, I was wait, about to give my exposition of those seven verses, but I feel you've said something that's inaccurate. God did not create the devil. God created holy angels, and one of them, a very powerful, a very beautiful, a very wise angel, decided uh, to do evil and to try and usurp the throne of God in eternity and wickedness was found in him and, and he became the devil because of his own iniquity and wickedness God did not create the devil okay I'll read I'm sorry I'll rephrase that God created Lucifer well who was an angel and then eventually he fell God kicked him out and then he became Satan that's right beloved that's right. correct so, so back to what I wanted to say uh, I know the scripture says well, we've got to be cautious with a multitude of words. Sin is never far away. Um, so looking at these verses, beloved, it's like an introduction to the whole book. And it's declaring uh, that this is where uh, these deem uh, an instruction is found. And, uh, you know, I'm very interested in etymology, uh, Anthony and uh, visual dominion is what Elohim Yahovah has over all creation. Visual dominion, wisdom. Uh, and uh, what God says uh, is the dominical rule over the whole planet and all over all the nations. You know, the king of nations, uh, the king of eternity, the king of the universe, the sovereign potentate ruling and reigning over all mortals and devils. All devils will bow the knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. All humans will bow the knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. So these deem, what God deems, is what happens in the nations and in mortals' lives, beloved. What I God agree. deems is what happens. And as to understanding, everyone stands underneath Elohim Yehovah. You know, and to have the instruction of these deem, uh, and to have what what is justice, um, is very very important. And you know, so it's declaring that this is where you will find the the knowledge and the understanding needful for a successful life. And I like how you've mentioned other scriptures uh, very much, Anthony. And in James chapter one, I think it's verse nine. If any man like wisdom. Let him ask of God who gives liberally to all and upbraideth not. So, so we ask and we receive, we, we seek and we find, we knock, and the door is opened to us. Now, much is, 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 is and this is my last point before we move on to the next portion, uh, much is, is said in the book of Proverbs um, concerning the reverence of Yahovah and the word fear in the English has certain connotations, but, you know, the word reverence, uh, you know, we're only to reverence Yehovah, you know, in the reverence of Yehovah, the reverence of the Lord is honour, life and riches, you know, um, and it tells you there clearly 
that the very beginning of knowledge is the reverence of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise Vizdin and instruction. So moving on to the next portion, beloved, what, what do you think about that? Yeah, I've just got to quickly say, I hardly agree with what you say. God is omnipotent, he's omnipresent, he's omniscient. And I'm just going to touch on the first verse of Isaiah 66. He says, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things my hand has made and all those things exist, says the Lord. But on this one will I look, on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit and who trembles at my word. You know, the reverence of the Lord is the first sign of wisdom. You know, and, 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 and go well, we're looking at 8 to 19. And it says, uh, my son hears the instruction. My son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother, for they will be graceful ornaments on your head and chains about your neck. You know, we've, we've kind of touched on that. Uh, and then it says, uh, let's look a little bit further down. I mean, it's given, it's talking about Solomon's life as, we, as that con the context of this scripture, but we can all that power of identification because Solomon was just another human being. You know, God chose to be prophetic. And, uh, but we can all identify with the human nature, you know, and, and uh, so it, it says, uh, we shall find all kinds of precious possessions. We shall fill our houses with spoil. So basically for me and what I'm gathering from that and, and more that's been revealed to me through the word is bad company corrupts good character. So from the old life I used to live, you know, the old has gone and the new has come. If anybody be in Christ, the old has gone and the new has come. So it's giving, you know, as you said, it's giving clear cut direction here on how to live your life. Right. You know, it's, it's giving you clear cut direction to walk in the, you know, because the law the 613 laws, we don't live under that, we live under the blood of time now, but 613 laws reveal my fallen nature to me. You know, and then God's given me a the free will to make a conscious decision to turn my will and my life over to him and start adhering and, and repenting and turning and fleeing from anything that I shouldn't be doing in a sinful nature. You know, and overcoming through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is strong. You know, and uh, so it says... Uh, 18 but they will lie in wait for their own blood they lurk secretly for their own lives so you know it says it in romans 6 uh you know about being dead in your trespasses right and the only way why jesus came you know jesus came you know because god is the judge the devil is the attempter is the accuser and jesus is our advocate he comes to reconcile to the father you know, he, he, he comes to advocate, you know, he's seated at the right hand of the Father, but he seats us in heavenly places. He is the head, you know, and and and, and where it is the body, you know, we're the body. And, 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 and it says, so are the ways in 19 of everyone who is greedy for gain. It takes away the life of its owners. So if I'm, if I, that's ideology. You know, it's a form of ideology. If I'm looking at other things, the seven deadly sins, pride, lust, greed, gluttony, envy, jealousy, slow. If I'm if I'm putting anything else, because it says, seek ye the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all shall be added unto you. You know, so God's got to come first, you know, at the front of everything, because everything I have, I've learned and I understand today, all wisdom, knowledge and understanding, the breath of life to be breathing, Everything, I take no credit for nothing. Everything is by God's grace. All is a gift from God, and, you know, and for a blessing or a lesson or a lesson or a blessing, you know, because I do believe we're just sojourning. We're just pilgrims passing through a day at a time, you know, and in this fallen world to, to, to get to eternity. And the only way through that is through Christ. The only way to get there is through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So what the Proverbs are kind of showing us is the life not to live and the life to live it's very you good answer. and you know i think uh, parental instruction the scripture saith uh, teach a man 
when he is young, how he should live, and he shall not depart from it when he is older. And that which is natural is often that which is spiritual. You know, we, we grew up in our parents' homes, most of us, fed and nurtured and nourished and protected. Uh, and we were taught the natural order of things, weren't we? And, uh, you know, I, I'd like to say this, Anthony, you're quite right. Uh, you know, the law was holy, just and good. And righteousness is not by obeying precepts and commandments and statutes. Uh, the righteousness of Elohim Yahovah is what sinners uh, receive through faith in the blood atonement, the finished work, the complete and entirely finished work of his majesty, King Jesus. Now, it is God's righteousness uh, that's available to men and women, and they become part of the church the body of the Christ, the Lamb's wife. Indeed, you are the body of Christ, Anthony. A believer in Jesus Christ is actually the body of Christ. That's a fact. There's one body. There's not two or 32. There's one body. Throughout the history of this planet, there's one body. Now, we're, we are commanded... A lot of New Testament believers don't realize this. It tells us clearly in the New Testament that we are commanded to obey the glorious gospel of the blessed God. And we are to obey the blood of Jesus Christ. We are to be obedient to the faith of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. It's very easy. The natural mind of man doesn't like to think of obligation and requirement. But every man is required to be obedient to the gospel of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Loving your neighbor as yourself, walking in grace, reading the scriptures, being agreeable to the king, being subject to the king, letting the Lord have mastery over you. The Lord's not your master if he doesn't have mastery over you. You're not a subject to the king unless you're subject to the king. Oh, no. Now, this passage is chiefly talking about demons, Anthony. Doomed, damned, deluded demons. Wicked, hateful, murderous, violent deceivers. They seek to entice men into lust and greed and envy and hatred every day, Anthony. We're not to consent, we're to keep the instruction of our parents to be gracious and loving around our necks now whenever you see blood in scripture it speaks of the blood of jesus christ the very first mention of blood in scripture was the blood of abel shed by the second man born was murdered by the very first man ever born by natural birth upon this planet the very first man ever born was a murderer anthony and he murdered the second man born. Cain murdered Abel. That's the first mention of blood in scripture. The principle of first mention. Wherever you see bloodshed, it speaks of Christ. It speaks of the curse. And it speaks of the work of the devil in seeking to destroy and undermine and ruin the beauteous, glorious creation of Elohim, Yahovah. The devils want to swallow you up. But they themselves have been destroyed by the blood atonement, by the death, by the agonies, by the resurrection, by the sovereignty of eternal counsel. The doomed, damned, deluded demons, they know their future is the bottomless abyss for a thousand years, Anthony. And then they know they will go in the lake of sulfurious, contempt where they will be tormented eternally the smoke of their torment will ascend forever into that place will be those that love and make lies those that make women of themselves all those that reject the truth that reject the lord jesus christ that speak a lie and live a lie and are not obedient to the glorious gospel of the blessed god Oh, yes. Death, hell, and the grave will be turned into the lake of fire, Anthony. 
now i think that basically covers that whole chapter i think the last verse there beloved the enemies of yahovah the enemies of mankind the deluded doomed demons they sought to have gain they wanted the glory that elohim yahovah alone has they couldn't have it there was war in heaven and they lost their place in heaven they were cast out of heaven cast out of eternity up into time upon the earth they lost their first estate there's no redemption for the doomed demons you know there's no salvation for them salvation is for human beings oh yes they lost their first estate they were greedy so they were cast down to earth where they wanted possession they wanted to take control of god's wondrous creation anthony they wanted to ruin the first man and woman Think of that first man, Anthony, who his woman went away, flesh of his flesh, bone of his bone. She went away after the devil and the man went away after the woman. The woman obeyed the devil. The man obeyed the woman. Think of the feelings that that first man, he would have looked upon her and thought, malady, malady. And Christ is the first and the last. He has redeemed the woman his wife, the church. Christ has his church, beloved. Okay, over to you, Anthony. We're on the last portion of chapter one. Yeah, I like the way you, uh, you know, you kind of, you spoke about that and you spoke about the bad seed, the good seed. You know, you spoke about Cain and Abel there, you know, and uh, the Canite, you know, and, and, and the Messianic tro prophecy, you know, the enemy trying to stop that, but he can't stop it. I'm just going to touch on another quick bit of scripture. And it's uh, Isaiah 66. I'll start at verse 3. It says, He who kills a bull is as if he slays a man. He who sacrifices a lamb as if he breaks a dog's neck. He who offers a grain offering as he offers sw swine's blood. He who burns incense as if blesses an idol. Just as they have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their admonitions, so I will choose their delusions and bring their fears on them. Because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not hear. And they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I do not delight. Hear the word of the Lord. You who tremble at his word, you brethren who hated you, who cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified that we may see your joy, but they shall be ashamed. So getting back to... This proverb, wisdom calls aloud outside. She raises her voice in the open squares. Well, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. She cries out in the chief concourses at the opening, many are called, but few are chosen. Uh, at the openings of the gates in the city, she speaks her words. How long you, simple ones, will you love simplicity? Scorners delight in their schooling you know it also says in that it says in the proverbs and it says in two peter i think if you can wash a pig and it still returns to the mire like a dog returns to its folly right you know so turn at my rebuke repent surely i will pour out my spirit on you you know god that's a you know god's god's god saying you know surely i will pour out my because and it says i will make my words known to you the revelation, the spirit, the regeneration, the spiritual circumcision, because they thought that they were saved through the Torahs, their legalism, and being circumcised is a circumcision of the heart. Because I have cried and you have refused, I have stretched out my hand and no one regarded. You know, God, time after time, the reset through the Bible, because you are disdained all at my counsel, you know, and would have none of my rebuke, pride. You know, we were talking about Lucifer, Satan earlier, the devil, his pride got him kicked out, you know, and, and, and then when that, when, you know, the Adamic curse, what happened in the garden, you know, with the forbidden fruit, uh, you know, that's when that sin entered us, you know, that sinful nature that we have got. You know, because the Bible says all of sin and fall short to the glory of God. It says, I also will laugh at your calamity. So God's just probably sitting back 
and laughing. You know, when he says, he says it now, I'm sitting back and laughing at your calamity. I will mock when your terror comes. When your terror comes like a storm and your destruction comes, because whatever's meant for evil, God will turn it to his glory. But when we're called, we need to, you know, the wisdom is repent, uh, you know, and it says like a whirlwind when distress and anguish come on you, upon you, you know, because the sins of omission and commission and God is sovereign. You know, look at Jonah. He got him into the well. You know, there's various stories like that. Look at Jonah, Jonah 2, you know, it talks about it in that, you know, and it says, uh, look at Paul, the road to Damascus. Uh, you know, we're just giving examples here through, 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 through the Bible, Paul, you know. So it's because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Well, you know, we just see it here in this proverb. We see it there in Isaiah 66. You know, it says, uh, and, and it says it in Psalm 51, you know, come to me with a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. You know, blessed are the poor in spirit. God's sovereign, all life comes from God. He is the Alpha, he is the Omega, he is the first, he is the last, he is the author and the finisher, and he is the Alpha and the Tab, from the end to the beginning, to the beginning to the end. You know, he's omnipotent, he's omnipresent, he's omniscient, you know, he's all powerful, all present, all knowing. And it says, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would have none of my counsel and despised my every rebuke. But God's a merciful, loving God, you know, and through, 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 he gave his only begotten sons for he so loved this world that whoever believed for him should not perish but ever everlast in life. You know, if he really wanted to destroy us, he could have just destroyed us, you know, but he wants to save. He wants to save. You know, he says, therefore they shall eat the fruit of their own way. You know, what he told them, that they will be filled to the full with their own fancies. For the turning away of the simple will slay them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. So I know, and you often use this phrase, everything's okay on the throne. I know when, when I seek Jesus, all things are possible through those believe in Jesus Christ. I know that I abide in him, he'll abide in me. I know that Christ is the vitality of all life. Even the demons shudder at his name. You know, submit to God, resist the devil, he will flee. Draw closer to God, he will draw closer to you. You know, and, and when you start looking and realising that he is the way, he is the truth and the life. That's right. That's right, Anthony. That's right. So I want us to quickly move into chapter two in a moment. So I think, I think you know, um, this portion here, just very briefly, the call of the gospel, the outward call of the gospel ought to go to every man, but the inward wooing of the Holy Spirit goes to the elect, to the called, to the chosen. Um, and day unto day utters wisdom, night unto night shows understanding. Uh, we have to watch out for simplicity. Uh, you know, we, we are to seek the Lord on a daily basis from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The name of Yahovah is great and greatly to be praised. Um, we have there really, throw, it calls back to the garden, to, to the initial situation uh, where Elohim, Yahuwah made man and woman both entirely perfect, perfect and both entirely in his own image. Uh, and sin and wickedness came in. They, um, you know, they went after the deception of the, the doomed demon. Um, and it tells you clearly uh, that when men disdain God's counsel, God laughs at their calamity. Uh, when they reject sound counsel and wisdom, distress and anguish comes upon them, both individuals and nations. Uh, and then when such persons then call, God will not answer. So this is the word of God. Then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me because they hated knowledge and they did not choose the reverence of Yehovah. So I'd like us to go move on to chapter two. Um, and I'd like us to succinctly 
um, read this uh, and then speak as to the text. There's 22 verses, so that's 11 each. Um, would you like to read the first 11, beloved? Yes, I will. Okay, Proverbs 2. Thank you, Paul. Uh, my son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. His mouth come knowledge from his mouth, sorry, come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield for those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity, and every good path. When wisdom enters your heart and acknowledge, and acknowledge it is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you, understanding will keep you, to deliver you from the way of evil. For the man who speaks perverse things, for those who leave the paths of unrighteousness, to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice... I think we was doing 11 each, beloved. Sorry, my, my fault. Oh, uh, no, it's all right. I, I so enjoy your reading. I was just listening to your voice. So will I, do you want me to take over from 12 to deliver yeah, you? Yeah, yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry about that. I'm obviously like... Not at all. To deliver, you, to deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things, from those who leave the paths of uprightness, to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and they delight in the perversity of the wicked, whose ways are crooked, and who are devious in their paths, to deliver you from the immoral woman, from the seductress who flatters with her words, who forsaketh the companion of her youth, and forgetteth the covenant of her God. For her house leads down to death, and her paths to the dead, None who go to her return, nor do they regain the paths of life. So you may walk in the way of goodness and keep the paths of righteousness. For the upright will dwell in the land, and the blameless will remain upon it and in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. So what I propose we do, Anthony, is, is take a minute or two each to, to comment um, rather than go through the whole thing. I don't know why don't we look at it in roughly two halves. So, uh, you know, we're coming towards the last portion of the podcast. Uh, but if you're happy to, perhaps you would like to spend a minute or two, I don't know, uh, we, you know, commenting on the first half uh, and I'll do the same and then we'll go on and then on to the second half. What do you think? Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so it says, my son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, well, that's my spirit, man. That's my inner being, right? You know, that's, that's, that's where God resides, right? That's where, you know, and the indwellment of the Holy Spirit, you know, so at my very core is Jesus. You know, and, uh, you know, it says nothing, Paul says this, I think, he says nothing good lives inside me but Christ. You know, and uh, so, you know, if I hear the words, you know, seek ye the kingdom of God and all his righteousness all shall be added from you, asking it will be given, seeking you will find and not the door and it will be opened. You know, great he that is within you and he that is in the world. Your lot's been cast into your lot, but the whole decision thereof is of the Lord. Uh, walk by faith, not by sight. If anybody be in Christ, the old has gone, the new has come. You know, and I start the scripture starts getting ingrained in me. You know, and and and, and you know, one uh, one John one eight to ten. 
you know, when I, I, I confess my sin, you know, and if I say I haven't got that sin within me, I haven't got the word of God. God says that, you know, he will stamp his word on our hearts, you know. So when we start reading and getting the revelation, the wisdom, the revelation around scripture through the power of the Holy Spirit and, and, and realizing that Christ, the remez, you know, is in every book of the Bible. He's in every part of the Bible. You know, and it says, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. You know, so look at Jesus as an example. You know, he knew no sin, but look at the wisdom, his parables, the way he healed, you know, God incarnate, you know, uh, you know, the son of God, the son of man. And it says, yes, if you cry out for discernment, you know, so it tells us to test the spirit in uh, 1 John 4. It tells us to test the spirit, you know, and because uh, you spoke about eschatology, you know, you spoke about the apostate, you spoke about the false teachers, you know, so we got to be aware because you've got to remember, we've got to be aware of the enemy in the outpost, which is Satan, you know, and because uh, yeah. we got to know that everything is through Christ from, you know, everything. Right. You know, and uh, it says, if you seek wisdom, it says, if you seek her as silver and search for her as the hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. You yeah. know, because it's Jesus that saves us from the wrath of God. It's, you know, Jesus saves us from the wrath. Absolutely, Blue. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, um, I mean, you know, we are to receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to deliver our souls. Every human being is in a battle of the mind and body every day, Anthony, to, to pursue holiness and righteousness and faithfulness, to flee lust, greed, envy, hatred, pride and resentment. Um, to realize that uh, you, Anthony, and every believer is upon the Father's throne in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where you are. You spoke of the internal realities. Here's a, 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 another perspective. You know, you're, you're in Christ upon the Father's throne. The bride is, well, the bride is Christ. That's the mystery of things. Every human being that is, that is part of the one true church, washed in the blood, filled with the Spirit, is Christ. I know it's quite a statement, but it is true. You know. Um, uh, and I just want to encourage anyone that's that's perhaps uh, clicked on this video, um, that's perhaps not that familiar with scripture, the Lord Jesus Christ is able to save completely uh, and to make a man or a woman completely whole and completely free. So I would suggest getting into the scriptures Get yourself a Bible uh, and, and read the scriptures daily uh, and pray, you know, and, um, you know, everything upon the planet, above the planet, the sun, moon, stars, the fish of the ocean, the birds of the air, every human being is presently sustained by the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the life in every human being. The life behind thine eyes is the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and we are to receive God's word. Uh, I recently did a, a trio of podcasts on Psalm 119. Um, so by all means, check out the other 20 videos on this channel. Um, the, the entrance of God's word brings light. Um, God's word runs very swiftly. Uh, God always keeps his word. Uh, God always fulfills his word. Um, and when you to as you are God's commands, um, the well, the... The, the letter T is, is the Hebrew letter, it's the, well, it's the sign of the cross. The letter T is the word Tav, which is the cross, and the command men, the cross. That is the commandment, the cross, you know, to obey the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus. That is the command. And so day by day, we are to keep our vessels in sanctification and honor, and we're to know how to keep our bodies as temples of the living God. We're to incline, incline our ear to the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> um, we are to seek understanding and discernment. We're to understand the reverence of Yahovah and find the knowledge of Elohim, the knowledge of God. Because Yahovah gives these deen, 
Christ is our VSD. Uh, out of the mouth of Yahovah, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth of Yahovah. You know, see, and out of God's mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He is a shield to those that walk rightly. Then you will understand righteousness, justice, equity, and every good power. So we've got a little bit of time left now to look at this last half here. So why don't we take a couple of minutes each to share our thoughts on this, this last passage here? Okay, yeah. Uh, you know, you said meekness is not in weakness, it's a pride or strength. And, you know, the, the first, you know, getting, you know, God says, humble, humble yourself, you know, come to the throne of grace. You know, we, we go in humbly and come out boldly. You know, be humble but bold in spirit. But this, where we are now, is just amazing when you really do look at this. It says, when wisdom enters your heart, because, you know, regeneration precedes salvation, right? You know, so the spiritual circumcision, what I was touching on earlier, and it says a knowledge is pleasant to your soul because it's all about our souls getting saved. You know, and for anybody listening to this podcast, you know, uh, it says a wise man wins souls. But God, Christ has paid the price on that cross, you know, and it says discretion will preserve you and understanding will keep you. But I understand that and know that and confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Saviour because every knee will bow below the earth, on the earth and above the earth. And every tongue will confess because Paul said about the promises. Well, the first promise has been fulfilled from Genesis 3. You know what God says in Genesis 3.15 you know, and, and, and then the promise was fulfilled on the cross. The wrath of God was satisfied, but Jesus rose three days later because he told the enemy, you know, he will, bruise, you will, uh, he will bruise your head and you will bruise his heel. And now the second promise is to be fulfilled. God starts on a promise and always finishes with a promise. And it says uh, to deliver you from the way of evil. Well, I know that where I was and where before Christ and where I am today you know, it's just absolutely a miracle. And, it's, you know, it's, I can take no credit for my salvation. I take no credit for my recovery. You know, it's all an act of providence. It's a divine intervention, you know, and this, you know, you read Acts 9 and it just gives you, it shows you Paul, you know, and the Paulian ministry. And it says, from those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, so, uh, sorry, it says to deliver you from the evil way, from the man who speaks perverse things. Well, remember I said, the Bible also says, bad company corrupts good character. You know, God is the potter, we are the clay. He breaks us, he makes us, he shapes us, he molds us, and he makes us. It says that he's the potter, we are the clay in Isaiah 64 and in Romans 11. And it also says, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in perversity of the wicked, whose ways are crooked? Because it's only God that can straighten out our crooked paths. The Bible tells us that. You know, Paul just spoke about Psalm 119, but it says in Psalm 119, 105, let your word be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know, he's a way maker, Jesus. It says to deliver you from your moral woman and from seductress who flatters with her words. Well, it says in 1 John 2, 16, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, which is prevalent to when Jesus got baptized by John in the river Jordan. And after 40 days, he was led to the desert and the devil was waiting there. Satan was waiting there, but he couldn't. He tried to tempt Jesus. But Jesus said, as Paul said, he said, he said be gone, Satan, for it is written, man is not living bread alone, but every word that proceeded from the mouth of God, for it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, for it is written again, thou shalt only worship and serve the Lord thy God. You know, so it says, uh, to deliver you from the immoral woman, from the seductress who flatters with her words, because you know, Satan will try and tempt you with the uh, secular world, you know, with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And that can come out with pride, lust, greed, gluttony, jealousy, envy, and sloth. You know, the only way we can overcome Satan is through Jesus, it's through the power of the Holy Spirit, it's through the blood, the precious blood. And he says, for her house leads down to death and her pass to the dead. You know, Paul was saying Christ is the bride, you know, so and none who go to her return, nor do they regain their paths of life. So once you're down in that pit, you're there. You're, that's it. It says, uh, 
so you may walk in the way of goodness. Uh, uh, uh. None who go to her return, nor they regain their part of life. So you may walk in the way. Now there's instruction here of goodness and keep to the path of righteousness because it's Christ is righteousness. Christ is the righteous. You know, he come for the unrighteous. He come for the sinner and not the saint. It says, for the upright who dwell in the land and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the earth. You know, it tells us in Revelations what's going to happen there. You know, and uh, it says, and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. Yes, absolutely quite so. <clears throat> so when Christ enters your heart, when wisdom enters your heart, knowledge is pleasant to your soul. Um, I mean, the good news of peace, pardon, power, and recon reconciliation um, is and ought to be a sweet savour, something we rejoice to hear and to know and to share with others. Um, discretion and understanding keeping us and preserving us because everything lives and moves and has its being in Elohim, Yahovah. And I like to be precise, Anthony, and sometimes I touch on very deep topics very briefly. And, you know, I mean... Okay, I said, did say Christ is the bride, and in the sense that the bride is the body, Christ is the bride. But obviously, we know the Lord Jesus Christ has his bride, the church, a living, glorious church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And the Lord Jesus Christ gave himself for his church and has his church, has all mankind, the Lord and Savior of all mankind. So obviously, there will come a moment when the Lord Jesus Christ will have his entire church at the marriage supper in a fast approaching day. But I believe it's entirely true to say uh, that, the, that the actual body of the Lord Jesus Christ is his bride, his wife, his redeemed. But just to come back to, to the passage here, um, we've got to be careful how we speak. You know, you are in the world, but not of the world. Anthony, we don't need to speak as worldly men speak. Right? We've got to be very cautious. Uh, we are told to be complete. We are told to be as the Father is uh, in the Scripture. But in the New Testament, the, there's only one or two passages that declare what a perfect man is like. And one of them says uh, a man that can restrain his tongue, that man is a perfect man who doesn't give offence by his words. Um, and so that's very interesting, very interesting. And so we've got to be careful how we speak, you know, because the devil initially questioned the word of God. He said, has God said? So the devil questioned the authenticity, veracity and accuracy of the word of God. So you know, that was the contention in the beginning. Hath God said? You and me, Anthony, need to know what God has said. Um, so, you know, this is obviously talking about, about the wicked spirits. And, and my last point I will make in this is this, uh, just as wisdom is personified, we also read of a whore, a seductress, a prostitute uh, in the book of uh, Proverbs and the book of Revelation. <clears throat> uh, now that largely speaks of life, mankind, um, the woman who went away from God. It speaks of that first woman who went away from God and uh, in a sense became spiritually a whore to the devil she prostituted herself to the devil and listened to the words of the devil you see and in proverbs and in revelation we read of a whore uh, and it speaks of mankind deceived under the influence of wicked spirits and deceiving others because unfortunately uh, every man and woman became a deceived deceiver going around deceiving a tree can only reproduce after its own kind. You don't get lemons off an apple tree, um, you know. Uh, you know, And so as we're in Christ, reading the scriptures, declaring the truth, walking in the truth, walking in the light, morally suitable and agreeable to the King Jesus Christ, his majesty, um, then, Antony, uh, we generally speak what is true. And the opposite of tr is true for those that do not nor love, obey, and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. They are deceived, deceivers, deceiving. And that is an explanation and definition of what is meant by the whore. It means human beings that are deceived, deceivers, Anthony. And that is spake of quite often in the book of Proverbs. Now it speaks of this seductress, verse 17. She forsook the companion of her youth. That woman forsook the first man. 
and she forgot the agreement of her Elohim of God. And of course, we know that everyone who has ever lived since has died, Anthony. Everyone who has ever walked this planet since then, apart from those alive at the present moment, including the Lord Jesus, has died. Uh, but we know that the firstborn from among the dead is a majestic eternal king, a great and mighty saviour God, the deity, Jehovah incarnate. Now, lastly, the upright will dwell in the land, and in the Hebrew, the word land is eret, it means the planet. The upright will dwell in the land. The, the next great event on this planet is a global resurrection of hundreds of millions of human beings, Anthony. One day, everyone who's ever walked this planet, man, woman, and child, will live again, you know. Everybody. Right? The next great event is a global resurrection of a thousand-year physical reign of the Lord Jesus Christ and his church. The purpose of this planet is the church, the redeemed, the Lamb's wife. One man, one woman. Adam and Eve, Christ and his wife. A thousand-year millennial kingdom. The upright will dwell upon this planet. Eternal life. Mankind will eternally endure. Christ has done it. Christ has saved all mankind, beloved. But the wicked, <clears throat> the wicked deluded spirits, the fallen angels, the devil and his angels will be thrust into the bottomless abyss for that entire thousand years. And that is what is declared in Proverbs 2, 2, 2, 2, 22. 2 being the number in scripture that speaks of the Son of God, the Father, the Son and the Spirit. 2.22, the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil, the wiles of the vile devile, come to nothing. The wicked will be cut off from the earth, and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. Now, that brings us to the end of today's podcast. So uh, I just want to, uh, to thank you, Anthony, for your time and your input. It's been an absolute pleasure. Your no worries. Uh, it's always a pleasure to break bread, you know, over the word of God. And it's always a pleasure to be able to hopefully impart, you know, uh, the seed, you know, the parable of the sower. And uh, hopefully ears will hear this. And, uh, you know, then, you know, we're responsible for the effort, but God's all responsible for the outcome. Your lot's been cast into your lap, but the whole decision there was a look in the Lord. But an honour and a pleasure, Paul, as usual. Thank you. Splendid. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll be back soon with another podcast. Shalom, shalom. Baruch Hashem Yahur Elohim. Shalom. <laughs>